instructional design process. In this short presentation, we will be talking about the processes that instructional designers may use to create instructional materials. First, let's take a look at some of the tools that an instructional designer uses to create instruction. And there are three sort of general categories of tools that instructional designers use. The first is instructional process. Now, this is something we'll talk about in detail in this presentation, but instructional designers follow systematic processes for creating instruction. This helps to ensure the quality of the instruction. Instructional designers also consider theory. This is sort of a broad term, but theory really helps us understand how people learn and how we can help them to improve their learning. Research and practical experience all inform the theory that we have in the field of instructional design. The third type of tool that instructional designers use is a physical tool, anything that they use to create the instruction. This can include a pen and paper, a computer, a laptop, it can include a smartphone or a video camera, any physical tool that's used to create the instruction. So in this presentation, we're going to focus on the first one, which is instructional process. Now there's a general process that's called the ADDI process. The phases and steps within the ADDI process are really reflected in almost every instructional design process there is. So let's take a look at what this general process is. The first step in the process is analyze. Before creating any instructional materials, instructional designers really take a close look at several things. First, what are the goals of the instruction? What are the specific objectives or performances that we want our learners to be able to perform? What do the learners already know about this topic so that we can build on what they learn? Where will they be doing their learning? Where will they actually use the knowledge they're gaining? So this is sort of the analysis that an instructional designer goes through. Once an instructional designer has a good idea of what their goals are and where they want their learners to be, the next step is to design the instruction. Now this means really planning out exactly what strategies we'll use, what medium will be used for the instruction, how we want the learners to interact with the materials and so forth. It's really a planning phase and this is where instructional designers think deeply about what they know about what helps people learn. Once a really solid plan has been created, instructional designers begin to develop the materials. This is where they use those physical tools to really create the materials and also the experiences that the learners will have. After the instructional materials have been developed, the next phase is implement or implementation. Instructional designers have the learners actually use these materials. The final phase in the ADDI process is evaluation. And there are really two types of evaluation. The first is formative evaluation, in which instructional designers get feedback from learners and from other experts on how their instruction is working and how they might improve the instruction. And the purpose of this formative evaluation is really to figure out how to revise these materials and improve them so that when they're implemented in full, they can be as effective as possible. The second type of evaluation is summative evaluation. This summative evaluation really is designed to find out whether the instruction worked and how well it worked. So these are the general phases or steps in the ADDI process. And you can see how each of these phases builds on the previous phase. You really need a good analysis before you can come up with an effective design. Same with development. If you develop before you have a good plan in your design, you're not going to be able to do a good job. So this is the ADDI process. Now let's take a look at a very specific process of instructional design. And this is called the systematic design of instruction. This is the process that we use in our courses here at Franklin University. So let's take a look at the steps in this process. The first step is to identify instructional goals. In this step, the instructional designer determines what new information and skills they want the learners to have mastered when they complete the instruction. As soon as these instructional goals have been identified, the next step is to conduct an instructional analysis. In this phase, the goal is to take a look at the sub-skills that are necessary to be able to perform the instructional goals. You really need to break down what each goal is into smaller pieces, smaller steps. The next step is to analyze the learners in their contexts. In this step, the goal is to really understand who the learners are, the context in which they're going to be doing the learning, and also the context in which they will actually use the skills. It's really important to know where the learners are so you can build off of that starting point. As soon as you've done these two analyses, the instructional analysis and the learner and context analysis, the next step 
is to create or write performance objectives. So these are specific statements of what learners will be able to do when they complete the instruction. As soon as the performance objectives have been created, the next step is to develop assessment instruments. Now these really measure the learner's ability to perform whatever you described in those objectives. It's a way of finding out how well your instruction has worked and whether or not the learners have gained what you want them to gain. After developing these instruments, the next step is to develop your instructional strategy. This is similar to the design phase. You plan out your instruction. Really try to figure out how we're going to present new content, examples, demonstrations, how the learners are going to interact with the materials, and how you assess the learners. Your instructional strategy should be based on instructional theory, what we know works in instruction. After developing your instructional strategy, the next step is to develop and select the instructional materials. This is where you actually produce the instruction. And again, this should be based on the instruction strategy that you've created. As soon as these materials are created, the next step is to design and conduct a formative evaluation of the instruction. Now remember, this is formative because its purpose is to help create and improve the instructional processes and the products that you've created. So after doing this formative evaluation, you really gain an in some insights on how to improve the instruction. So in the model, there are these connecting lines where you go back and say, okay, now we know we need to revise the instruction. We may need to conduct an, another instructional analysis or write some more performance objectives that are more focused on the learners. We may need to develop new ins assessment instruments or instructional strategies. We might need to develop and select different materials. And we may even need to reanalyze our learners in their contexts. In this way, the systematic design of instruction allows you to revisit steps or phases so that you can really improve and refine your instruction. The final phase is to design and conduct a summative evaluation. This summative evaluation really lets you know whether or not your instruction worked. So this is the systematic design of instruction. You can see how each step or phase builds on the previous. I hope this has been a useful overview of instructional design process and we will continue to develop videos to help explain instructional design concepts.